Well, praise God, everybody. Amen. Good to see everybody. All right, I'm Apostle Dr. Linda Herbert. This is my husband, Apostle Jeff. And we want to thank you for joining us at Covenant Life Church today. And we're here for another Sunday. Amen. Amen. And today is the 3rd of May, 2020. Amen. A very important year. Amen. Amen. Yes. All right. Praise God. So before we get started, I'm going to ask Jeff if he'd go ahead and pray for us. <clears throat> Father, we come into your presence to give you praise and thanks and give you the honor and the glory that's all yours. We pray for the people of God today. We pray that no one is getting this coronavirus. Amen. No one is, is is sick. No one's going to die from this. Amen. We thank you for your protection. And uh, we also pray for this time together as we fellowship around your word. Lord, that you would quicken uh, your, our mortal bodies by the power of your spirit and amen. the power of your word. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thanks, honey. Appreciate that. All right. So uh, today... Amen. We are, our topic today is going to be uh, inheritance through the blood. Amen. Through the shed blood of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Praise God. And something the, the Lord just uh, quickened in our spirit. Amen. Especially during this time of famine. Amen. You know, it's all about the blood of Jesus. Amen. If it weren't for the blood of Jesus, we wouldn't have anything at all. Amen. So before I really uh, delve in, I just want to make a couple of quick, quick announcements for those who are just passing through or have never seen us. Uh, we're from, uh, we are ordained with Bishop uh, Dr. Bill Hammond, Christian International, and we are Covenant Life Church, and we're located near Washington, D.C., and uh, we appreciate you all of you joining us on, on Facebook, and we praise God, amen, the Lord says in everything, give thanks, so uh, through the plague, that, that's what we're, we're calling this, uh, the Lord has it's what pushed it us, is. yeah, that's what it is, he pushed us into social media, so it's been a good thing, and we amen. thank those that have never seen us before that you have the opportunity to take a, take a look and just re receive by the, by the word. Amen. Mm -hmm. And I uh, just want to uh, invite you to our, our website. Our website is www.covenant-life-church.org. And we have all kinds of free products and free information uh, on our website. Most everything we do is free. Amen. We just want to bless the uh, people of, you know, of God. Amen. So we are called to raise and train the uh, pro prophetic and the apostolic. Amen. So we're just thankful that you're joining us uh, today. Amen. And this is a day that the Lord has made, and we're going to rejoice and be glad therein. Amen? Amen. Praise God. And we're so happy uh, that the Lord has protected us, and he's, he's covered us by his blood. And that's what we want to talk about today. What's our inheritance mm -hmm. because of the shed blood of Jesus Christ? I mean, we are wealthy in Christ. Amen? Praise God. Thank you, Lord. All right. Um, so with, with that, um, I'm, I'm going to go, go ahead and kind of launch in. And uh, we're kind of doing this on the... We, uh, we enjoyed our, our table talk the other night on Friday night. We have table talks, and uh, many people uh, complimented us on our, our last table talk. They said <laughs> it was fun, and so I asked Apostle Jeff just to sit in while I was, uh, it's my, my, uh, the Lord functioned me to do the sermon today or lead the topic today, let's put it like that. So Apostle Jeff is, is here. We're going to do a little bit of probably of a table talk. He's going to jump in whenever he feels led. Amen. Praise God. We appreciate his teaching gift. Amen. So you'll see it pop out from time to time to time. Amen. Uh, so by, by way of an intro uh, to the topic today, um, uh, one of our, our uh, elders in the, in the church is an ordained uh, and commissioned uh, uh, prophetess, uh, Prophetess Dr. Shayla. And she gave our church a word on the 9th of February in 2020. It was a corporate word. And it talked a lot about inheritance. Mm -hmm. And uh, and the Lord had been speaking to Apostle Jeff and, and I, uh, you know, about inheritance. And then she got up and started prophesying about it. So that to us was a definite com confirmation that this was a topic in the, in the spirit, right, for mm -hmm. us. And so I want to read you a portion of the prophecy uh, that she gave to the entire church. This prophecy is a corporate one. There were pieces in it that were meant for Apostle Jeff and I, but also for the whole congregation. So if you're affiliated with Covenant Life Church today, whether you're uh, a covenant partner or a member, you, this is applicable to you. Mm -hmm. Amen? Praise God. And if you don't have this word today and you would like it, uh, I printed it, it out um, in the uh, chat box right now as Pastor Andrea on the other side. Amen? Uh, and by the way, if you're not on our mailing list today and you'd like to get on our mailing list, we send out newsletters and in information on conferences, uh, also these, these kind of things. Uh, just simply type in your email address into the chat box, and uh, uh, Pastor Andrea will put you on our mailing list, and she'll also send out this to you. Amen? So this is what, what the word was. It says, even as 2020 took place, 
The Lord says, I've begun releasing your inheritance. Amen. Mm -hmm. And the Lord says it's been released, but it says in 2020, there's going to be a manifestation. Amen. Yes. And the Lord said to begin speaking forth the manifestation of your inheritance. Mm -hmm. And she said it, the Lord was specifically talking to Apostle Jeff and I, but also to the church. Mm -hmm. Speak forth the manifestation. So what we've been doing, we've been saying, Lord, in accordance with your prophetic word, there's more of an inheritance out there. We claim our natural and our spiritual in inheritance. Right. Amen? Because there's two types. Mm -hmm. Amen? Yeah. And so, and the next part of the, the prophecy says, uh, begin to call forth the inheritance, even the ones that you know about. Okay? So if you already know there's an inheritance, like for example, we have precious promises. We, we have prophetic promises. We have uh, prophecies that extend way back almost 30 years, that things have not come into fruition yet. And this or word is telling fruition. right, and this word is telling us there's going to be <clears throat> manifestation this year. Amen. Mm -hmm. And now the Lord is saying, speak it forth. Amen. So we're claiming it. We say, Lord, we want all of our inheritance, whatever that is. Amen. And then the uh, word was that there's suddenlies and there's surprises in the land. Okay. And even some things were going to be unlocked for us. Amen. And see, some things it takes God to un unlock it. Yes. Okay, especially if you're going to buy lands and buildings in Washington, D.C. and need multi-millions of dollars. Yeah. <laughs> and there's government bureaucracy and all kinds of things. And, okay, that's in the natural. Then you've got things in the spiritual. And, and the Word of God says that there are secrets, right? That, that you know, there are things that, that He holds in reserve for appointed times. And there are seasons and times in our life. Mm -hmm. And, and uh you know, and he, he, God has secrets. He doesn't have to tell us everything, and there's a reason for that. But there's timing that he unlocks things in our life, okay? And then the, the uh, prophecy says, I'm releasing them to you this day. The manifestation will be upon you. But the Lord says it's voice activated, and that's a key. Mm -hmm. It's voice activated, and he said, begin to speak into the situations. And he said, as you speak, you will begin to see that the Lord your God is unlocking and working on your behalf. Amen? Amen? And so, and then there was also a further word that there's inheritance in the generations mm -hmm. that people have not claimed. Right. And God says he wants a manifested to you, and he wants to not only manifest it, but he wants to give you a double portion. Right. Amen? Now that's a precious promise. Mm -hmm. Praise God. Amen? Amen? So ever since we've gotten that word in, in February... That was a confirmation of something that we had in our spirit, okay? And so we've been agreeing in prayer every morning that God's going to release our inheritance to us, and we claim it. And you see it's voice activated, right. okay? Yeah. Everything in the kingdom is on the principle of Romans 10, 9, and 10. Amen? You have to believe in your heart and confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus. Right. Those are the keys. Mm -hmm. Everything in the Word of God mm -hmm. operates on that same principle. Mm -hmm. Amen? No matter what it is. You have to believe what God has said, and then you have to confess it, meaning you're going to activate it, okay? You're going to speak it, okay? Amen. So since we got this, amen, we've been claiming that for the whole church, amen? amen. We've been covering all, all of our people, amen? Yes. And uh, and especially in this time of, of uh, plague and, and pandemic, okay, we believe that God is showing himself strong on behalf of his people, amen? Mm -hmm. And if you remember what we even talked about on Friday night, okay, you know, uh, the Israelites plundered the Egyptians right in the middle of plague. Right. Okay, God <laughs> prospered them and, and released them from captivity mm -hmm. right in the middle of plague. So what was bad for one set of people was good for another set of people. Right. Okay, so for God's people, okay, we don't look at the plague as a bad thing. We know it's demonically inspired, but right. God has given us precious promises to That's overcome. Right. And it's all through the blood of Jesus. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Praise God. So with that said, we need to understand what our spiritual inheritance in Christ is. Yeah. And like I said, it's all based on the shed blood of Jesus. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, uh, because Jesus died for us and shed his blood, we are entitled now. We have rights of ownership to everything in this Bible. Okay. And if you're passing through today and you don't know Jesus as your personal Savior, I want to, I'm unctioned right here. Just to right. make sure that you're saved. That's the most important thing That's that right. you can do in this world. Amen? And, and if, if you're, you've are you fallen away from the Lord, you're not sure what your status is, you know, you're, you're uncertain, you don't know if you're backslid or 
or you know you just don't feel that same first love that you used to have towards Christ, this is a good time right now to say a quick prayer and rededicate your life and just ask the Lord to give you back that first love. Okay? So we're, I'm going to lead you in a quick salvation prayer because we want to make sure that everybody's saved. That's right. the main thing. Mm -hmm. And so we say, Lord Jesus Christ, Lord Jesus Christ, come into my heart. Come into my heart. Forgive me my sins. Forgive me my sins. I want to live for you. I want to live for you. From this moment on. From this moment in on. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' and name. And for, for those who'd like to rededicate their life and, and stir that spirit again and get that first love back, Let's just go ahead and say another type of, type of prayer. We say, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus, I rededicate my life. I rededicate my life to you. To you. And I ask you, Lord. And I ask you, Lord, to uh, re give me that energy in my spirit once again. Give me that energy in my spirit once again. That I uh, even I uh, can see you as my first love. That I can see you as my first love. And Lord, just be that first love to me again. And just be that first love to me again. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. And so, Lord, we just ask, Father, a blessing upon the people right now, Lord, for those who didn't know Christ, and Lord, those who are trying to rededicate their life, Lord. I just ask you, Father, that you stir them again in the Spirit, Father. Amen. And, and just let them experience that first love of you again. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 And we have all of that. We have access to all of that because of uh, of the cross. Amen? Amen. So we need to apply the blood in every area of our of our life. And especially when we're walking through this time of uncertainty, yeah. we don't know where our job is coming from, where our next uh, meal is coming from, and all these kind of things. You know, God has given us precious promises here. Mm -hmm. Amen? So I, what I want to do is start out with a definition of inheritance because we need to understand and lay some groundwork that this, this book, these words of God belong to us. Mm -hmm. Amen? Now, Webster's Online Dictionary will tell you that inheritance means birthright, mm -hmm. okay? It's your right. It's, it's your birthright, yes. okay? All right? And so, uh, as in the case of my husband, uh, he's the only child, okay? Right. His birthright, all, all that his parents had, he, they, they gave to him. He inherited from them. It was his birthright, mm -hmm. okay? Because he's a son. And right. even if you're a daughter, it's still a birthright, right. amen? It's through the bloodline. Okay, and it gives us the right of ownership. Okay, so now it's our birthright through the shed blood of Jesus. Remember, he adopted us, and, and we say, Abba, Father. Amen? Amen? And so he shed his blood for us, mm -hmm. giving us the right to ownership. Amen. Amen? Of everything that is in the Word of God. Mm -hmm. Amen? And if we can get that in our spirit, that will resolve a lot of questions. It will take out a lot of doubt and un unbelief and fear. Okay? Amen. Because we know if God be for us, who dare be against us? Amen. Amen. And so now we already know as believers, one of the, the, one of the true uh, wonderful things about the inheritance, about the birthright, is that we have an eternal life. Right. Amen. Mm -hmm. And there's no greater gift than, than that. Right. There's no greater uh, inheritance that, mm -hmm. than we can have except knowing that, that we're going to spend eternity with uh, Christ. Amen. And, uh, and, and by the way, Oh, you have a thought? No. Okay. And uh, and and uh, something I want to mention. Okay, we don't we don't have to wait to die to get this birthright. That's right. <laughs> mm -hmm. Amen. Praise God. Amen. The Word of God says, Amen. There, this is a now word. Right. Amen. The Lord is with us every day, right now. That's In fact, there's a scripture that says He's near to us. Right. All we got to do is call upon Him. Mm -hmm. Amen. Notice the word said you got to call upon Him though. Amen. Praise God. All right. Psalm 16, 5 uh, says, The Lord is my portion. Mm -hmm. He's my inheritance. Amen? Praise God. And, we're just, and, and it says, in, in the New Living Translation, I uh, like this, this version too. It says, Lord, you alone are my inheritance, yeah. my cup of blessing, mm -hmm. and you guard all that is mine. Well, that's talking about right now in the here and now. Right. Okay? Mm -hmm. So so we have an inheritance in the natural and the spiritual right. because of the shed blood. And God has given us uh, precious things right now, right in this, this earth. Amen? Right. Yeah. Praise God. You see, it's because there's a blood covenant. You see, when there's a... See, Western people don't think about covenant like Eastern people do or understand it. You know, you hear Western people say, well, it's just a contract. Well, that's true, but there's much more to it when it's a blood covenant. This is a blood covenant. And when two people make covenant with blood, 
it means everything that I have is yours and everything you have is mine. So everything that Jesus has is ours. Uh, eternal life, forgiveness of sins, um, gifts of the Spirit, you know, fruit of the Spirit, on and on it goes. Uh, and so everything he has is ours. Well, because we just read that he himself is our inheritance. Mm -hmm. You can't inherit anything better than that. Amen. And so then, on the other hand, he gets everything that's yours. <laughs> yeah, amen. See? Amen. Including our sins. Oh, yeah. Our trespasses, our rebellion. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. our spiritual death, you know, mm -hmm. sickness, disease. He gets all that from us. Oh, yay. So I'd say we got the better deal. We did. We Amen. got the better deal. Amen. So let's talk about some rights of, of inheritance. We already mentioned eternal life. Right. Okay. I mean, you can't get any better than that, like Jeff said, right? right? Okay. Once you become a believer, amen, we know the word says as far as the east is from the west, he remembers our sin no more. Mm -hmm. You know, that's mind-boggling by itself. Because, mm -hmm. you know, I, I can remember a lot of sinful things I've done, you know. And there's a, there's a constant right. flesh-spirit conflict. Mm -hmm. And there's a, there's a, there's a constant... Uh, uh, nagging in the emotional realm, you know, uh, to, to forget those things which lay behind, as the scripture says, right? So it, it's a challenge. You know, we, we have to let go of the past, and God always tells us that. Let go of the past and embrace the future. And, you know, the Lord, he's never stagnant, okay? No. You, know, he, you know, he says you're either hot or cold. If you're lukewarm, he's going to spit you out, okay? And, <laughs> you know... Yeah. He, he, you know, the, when he said, you know, rested on the seventh day, that didn't mean he went somewhere and sat down and took a nap. That meant that he ceased from his creating. Amen. So, and he's, he's always moving. He's, he's doing, doing something doing else. Something. Right, right. Yeah. Praise God. You don't have to wake him up. Amen. And mm. so, and the best thing is we have eternal life. Amen. And the blood, his blood has cleansed us. Mm -hmm. If we can just get that principle alone and believe it, Okay, amen. Mm -hmm. I, you, you, would, you would really be farther along. Amen. So he's reconciled us to us. I mean, he's reconciled us to him, right, through his blood. And he's covered us. Amen. Mm -hmm. Praise God. You know, right now, and pardon me, it says that, uh, uh, you know, Jesus is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he ever makes intercession for us. Mm -hmm. Okay. He's up there taking care of us. Amen. And he's mm -hmm. near to us. Amen. So we have redemption and, and the forgiveness, you know, of, of, of sins. Amen. So that we can spend eternity in heaven. Amen. Praise God. We have power through the name of Jesus. Philippians 2, 9 through 12 says, Therefore God has highly exalted him mm -hmm. to the highest place and given him the name that is at every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow. Every knee has to bow to the name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. And we have access to through the name of Jesus, because Amen. of of the blood that that was shed, right. Amen. The cross is precious. Amen. Amen. I I, I uh, just love um, Jimmy Swaggart, evangelist Jimmy Swaggart. He's always talking about the the cross, right. the cross, the cross. Right. Well, he's an evangelist, right? right. So his anointing uh, and everything everything about him is evangelism and salvation. But he's right. Mm -hmm. It's all about the cross. Amen. Amen. Yeah. It's the shed blood of Jesus because we have. We have all of this because of the shed blood of Jesus. That's right. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. Now, you know, we're, we're going somewhere with this topic today. At the very end, I'm going to tell you, amen, don't accept defeat. Amen. I'm just telling you that right now. It's coming out of my spirit. Don't accept defeat. Don't, don't, uh, don't take your, your salvation for granted. Amen. Uh, uh, don't I accept the, the circumstances that you're in today. Amen. Because we have great and precious promises because of the shed blood of Jesus. Absolutely. And that's the main thing that the Lord wants to get across to us today. Right. Okay. But you got to choose this day. The Lord will never force us. Right. Okay. So and we will. I think one of the important things we want to take away from today is that He Himself is our inheritance. Yes. Wow. Yes. <laughs> you mm -hmm. know? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Okay. So the name, of, the name of Jesus is above every name. Every knee has to bow. Every sickness, every disease, every job problem. Amen? Mm -hmm. No matter what your circumstance is today, the name of Jesus has authority over that situation. Right. Mm -hmm. 
Amen. Mm -hmm. Every knee has to bow in That's heaven right. and on earth and even those under the earth. And Amen. everything has a name. Yes. You know? Mm -hmm. And so every name right. has to bow its knee to Jesus. So, mm -hmm. cancer, you bow the knee. That's right. To the name of Jesus. You don't have any authority over us. Amen. You don't have any authority over that name. Amen. Mm. Praise God. And, and that, perfect, honey, that dovetails right into Matthew 28, 18. All authority has been given to me in heaven and earth. Yeah. All authority. So we can do everything through the name of Jesus. Mm. Now you say, okay, Apostle Linda, well, I've been praying for, about something for 20 years. I haven't seen the manifestation yet. Well, that's why the word says you've got to endure to the end. Okay, there's an endurance principle. I'm sorry to tell you that, but that's scriptural too. Amen? Mm -hmm. and, and, the, and the Bible says don't be weary in well-doing. Right. Okay, that's not just talking about being a good person. Mm -hmm. You know, being weary in well-doing means well-doing, you're going to continue praying. Mm -hmm. You're not going to give up. You can't give up. Mm -hmm. See, the devil's always trying to get you to give up. Right. Okay, he's trying to get you to throw in the, the towel. And he will use anything that he can to get you to throw in, in, in the towel. So the biggest thing is you can't quit. You just you just tell them, I'm not quitting. And you have to make a confession. Okay? If you think it, believe me, he's going to stay on your shoulder and start speaking to you. Okay? He's going to keep on nagging you. You have to get up. Remember, you got to believe in your heart and confess with your mouth. That's the principle. you got to get up and you got to make a stand. And you got to tell them, devil, back off in Jesus' name. And the, I don't care what anybody says, the word of God is true. If you resist the devil, he has to flee. Because the name of Jesus is at, is above every name. Mm -hmm. Amen? And so you got to use your inheritance through the blood of Jesus. And you got to stand on the promises. And you got to beat up that devil. Mm -hmm. Praise God. Mm -hmm. Amen? Okay. And then next we're going to use the sword of the spirit. Amen? We're going to use the name of Jesus. And then we're going to stick him with the word. Praise God. Mm -hmm. Beat him up. Amen? Amen? I'm going I'm to tell you, beloved, listen, if, if, you don't, if you don't fight back, you know, he's going to try to kill you, destroy, or steal from you. Okay, that's his three-part mission. Mm -hmm. Right? Okay? Yeah. So it doesn't matter. You know, you can roll over, you can lay down. Well, then you're, you're, you're going to die a lot sooner. You're going to be destroyed. He's going to steal from you. So you might as well get up and use the Word of God and beat him up. Amen? Mm -hmm. So the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. Okay, Isaiah 55, 11. It says, my word will go forth from my mouth. Did you, see, did you hear that? The word is going forth from the mouth. Okay, we're speaking the word. It shall not return to me void, but it will accomplish what I please, and it will prosper in the thing for which I sent it. Yeah. Amen? Mm -hmm. You've got to speak the word. Amen? Matthew 4, 4 says, Man doesn't live by bread alone, but every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen? Praise God. Thank you, Lord. Mm -hmm. uh, Psalm 138, uh, 3. It says, for your loving kindness and your truth, you have magnified your word above all your name. Mm -hmm. Okay? This word is precious. Yeah. Beloved, I'm telling you, if you keep confessing the word in your situation, something has to change. Mm -hmm. Amen? Because the Lord just said he magnifies his word. And he, and, and he will even watch over his word to perform it. And it's mm -hmm. going to prosper in the thing he sent it. Right. Amen? Amen. Amen. So the devil cannot overcome God's word. He can't. But if you give up, then he's won. So you just got to hang in there. And if you feel like giving up, get a prayer partner. Get somebody who can help you. Amen? All right. Praise God. Amen. The Bible says two are always better than one. That's right. Yes. Amen? Mm -hmm. Praise God. Because yeah. if one fall, the other can help him up. And that's, right. that's why we're even married. Mm -hmm. Amen? We're, we help each other. That's right. what. That's why you got a prayer partner to help each other. Right. Okay. So if you're and single today, get a prayer partner. Business. Amen. You know, if you can find a partner to be in business with, mm -hmm. it's going to be easier. Amen. Because two are stronger than one. That's right. Always. But you have to be careful that the partner has the same vision and commitment and mm -hmm. that you have. But uh, if you don't have a business partner and you're in business. Mm -hmm. You can find somebody with some spir uh, spiritual sense and some business sense uh, that knows you and, and cares about you uh, more than anything else. That person can help you with your business. 
Mm -hmm. Amen. So now, and, and one caveat on that: if you go into business with somebody, you want to make sure you're doing it scripturally. The Bible says, yeah. "Don't be unequally yoked with unbelievers." Oh, yeah, that's what I was saying. Okay. Right? Well, some people don't know that. Oh. Okay. You know, you know, we have children. Okay, uh, so there's a scripture that says, "Don't be unequally yoked with unbelievers." For uh, what fellowship has righteous with unrighteous? Right. And that scripture means you don't go into business, you don't do a partnership with somebody who's not saved. Right. Amen. You got to make sure. Like Apostle Jeff said, your values are the same. First of all, are they saved? Amen. Right. Did God tell you to go into a partnership with them? Right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, amen. But I'm just and pointing then, out that a business right. partner makes running right. a business easier. Absolutely. Right. It's the principle of being to, together, of helping one another. Amen. Praise God. Now, another thing that we have because of the inheritance through the blood, we have the indwelling Holy Spirit. Amen. When we invited Christ into our heart, the Spirit came in. And not only that, he can baptize you in the, in, in the uh, baptism of the Holy Spirit, and you'll be speaking in tongues. Amen? And that gives you another really uh, awesome weapon. Uh, Romans 8.26 says the Spirit helps our weaknesses. That's right. For we don't know how to pray. Right. But the Spirit itself makes intercession for us. Right. And now he who searches the hearts knows what the mind of the Spirit is because he makes intercession for the saints according to the will of God. And that's part of your inheritance. Amen. Mm -hmm. And so something that Apostle Jeff and I were speaking in tongues one hour every day now. Amen. And we're just uh, tired of all the nonsense that the enemy trying to bring on us. Amen. So we're fighting back. Amen. We're using the weapons of our warfare because they're mighty through God to the pulling down the strongholds. Mm -hmm. And that's part of our inheritance through the blood. Amen. Mm -hmm. And so we're speaking in tongues. Amen. Because then the spirit is on the scene. And he makes intercession. Right. Well, he doesn't want us sick. He wants us prosperous. Amen. Right. And he, he, you know, all the things of the spirit, of, of the word, the spirit is going to intercede for you and bring about in your life. So the more you speak in tongues, amen, the more of a leg up spiritually you are going to have. Amen. So I just want to encourage you today. And if, and if you don't speak in tongues and you would like to, Amen. amen. Just extend your arms right now, and I'm going to pray for you very quickly. Amen. amen. Because there's no time or distance in the, in the Spirit. That's right. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, I just thank you right now, Father, for baptizing them in the, in the Holy Spirit. We just release an anointing for that right now, Lord. Stir them in the Spirit right now. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Praise God. All right. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. All right. A part of our inheritance also belongs to, uh, also involves, excuse me, a new level of authority. Mm -hmm. And we have that because of the name of Jesus. Amen. And I already mentioned uh, Ephesians 2, 6. He who has raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. So when we accept Christ, right away, we are positioned with him. Amen. Praise God. And so we have to understand. See, a lot of this, we, we lose focus. We don't realize our true inheritance. And, and the devil is right there to remind us of our past sins and all the things that we've done wrong so that we don't ever come to that place where we, we understand that we're sitting with Jesus in heavenly places. Okay. Amen? Yes. And we are kings, and, and, and he has called us to a royal priesthood. Praise God. We are of a royal lineage. Amen? And, and then, as I've stated earlier, he's given us the weapons of warfare. Mm -hmm. 2 Corinthians 10, 4 through 6. Yes. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they're mighty in God through pulling down strongholds. Mm -hmm. Amen. And, and all these weapons of warfare, they cast down arguments. Amen. Mm -hmm. And every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. Every high thing. Every high thing. You know, science contradicts the word. That's a high thing that's mm -hmm. going to come down. Uh, you know, there's people, uh, popular uh, celebrities that are always mocking Christians, mocking the word. That's a high thing that's going to come down, you see. And when you fight in the spirit realm, you don't use carnality. You don't use uh, thinking in the flesh. What you use is the... It, is spiritual weapons that we've just been talking about and they're not they're mighty through God and they cast down principalities and powers now so when you stand for something and you're speaking God's word to a mountain or a situation that you're in 
you can't see what your words are doing in the spirit realm mm -hmm. unless God reveals it to you. And But sooner or later, that mountain has got to move if mm -hmm. you keep the pressure on it by faith believing That's right. what the word has said. And that's where so many of us miss the boat. We, we think that we said it once, so that took care of it. <laughs> no, you have to maintain Amen. spiritual, what I call, spiritual pressure. Amen, that's right. My faith, coupled with the words from my heart, puts pressure in the spirit realm to bring results. And unless you keep that confession and keep that word going forth, you're not going to see it. Because, you know... I think, uh, how long was that angel held up? 21 days? Yeah. Until God mm -hmm. sent Gabriel to, or sent Michael, Michael to knock him in the head. Yeah, he's talking about Daniel. And, and get mm -hmm. the message through That's to right. Daniel. That's right. Well, supposing on the 20th day, Daniel stopped. That's right. You know, supposing mm -hmm. he just gave up on it and said, well. That's right. You know, I've been praying for this, but mm -hmm. it's not showing up. So, mm -hmm. you know, I'll go back in, uh, Amen. back inside and close the windows, go back inside. That's right. You know. Mm -hmm. And, that's yeah. the thing. And that's why the word says, don't be weary in well-doing. You've got to right. keep going. Amen? Right. right. So if you're getting mm -hmm. tired, get a partner. Amen? Right. Praise God. And you know, you don't get tired. <laughs> Amen. Uh, that's all. Amen. You know, you're, you don't have to ask your body or your head what it feels like doing. Yep. Amen. What the word says. Amen. You know? Something else I want to point out here, Jeff, in 2 yeah. Corinthians 10, 4. Yeah. Okay? And they're not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Mm -hmm. And then it talks about casting down arguments. Right. Okay? Mm -hmm. And everything that exalts itself right. against the knowledge of God, yeah. like you were pointing out, casting mm -hmm. down um, arguments, okay, excuse me, bringing every thought mm -hmm. into captivity. Okay? To the obedience. And see, uh, mm -hmm. we have a lot of sermons about the battles in the mind. Right. right. Okay? The enemy is right there to try to talk you out of something. Right, right. Okay? Mm -hmm. And he lies to you. He mm -hmm. constantly lies. That's all he can do is lie. Right, right. The devil's a father of lies. Mm -hmm. Okay? And, you know, and I think casting down arguments, uh, I think some of that is uh, the spirit-flesh conflict, yes. arguing back and forth. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And also there's another aspect to it, too. I think it has some arguments uh, obtain almost godlike status, like evolution. Yeah. I mean, if you believe in creation according to the Bible... You're just automatically cast down as a as a nut, as somebody who's uneducated and unintelligent, and what have you. You know what? <laughs> when the end comes, we'll see who the nut was, and we'll yeah. see who the unintelligent was. Right. I was smart enough to say get saved. I'll tell you that. Amen. Because when I had, when I heard the message, I heard the message of the cross before, and didn't think anything of it. But one day, I thought to myself, you know, it was, it was way back in, uh, in 77, 1977. The word then was, going to heaven in 77. <laughs> you know? And then in 88, it was through the gates in 88. Mm -hmm. You know, well, we're all still here. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Most of us are. Amen. And, you know, I thought to myself, you know, I don't want to go to hell. Yeah, amen. You know? Yeah. So I got saved. Well, that the Lord idea. says that I'm not, the people don't believe in God are fools. Mm -hmm. Well, we do believe in God, so you tell me who the fool is. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't care what they say. It's what does this word mm -hmm. say? And this word says that well, that, that was a pretty smart move. Amen, that's right. Amen. <laughs> amen. So part of the scripture now, you've got to bring every thought into captivity. If you're not there today, I'd, I'd like you to turn to 2 Corinthians 10, 4 to 6, because yeah. there's a lot of meat here, mm -hmm. and, and these are sermons all by themselves, so oh, yeah. we're just kind of skimming through this. But this is, I got, I got unctioned here just to stop a minute, and we're going yeah. to pause yeah. and, and, and reflect on this a little bit, right. okay? Because this is important. I mean, it's all important. Right. But, all right, so he's now, saying... I think it's important right now because of casting down arguments. Well, right. what are the arguments? The economy's never coming back. Mm -hmm. You're not going to get your job back. Mm -hmm. You're 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 going to uh, right. have to worry about this disease for years to come, yeah. and all the nee 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 nee. <laughs> Listen, this thing's going to come down a lot faster than you think. Yeah. Because there's multiple thousands of Christian people in this country 
praying that it does. Amen. 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 And so we're going to cast down the arguments. We're going to bring every thought into captivity yeah. to the obedience of Christ. Okay, what does that yeah. mean? Okay, that means if, if I have a, a thought that's contrary to the word of God, I, I don't need to meditate on that. Right. Okay, I want to bring it into the obedience of Christ. The obedience yeah. of Christ is keep my thoughts in accordance with the word of God. Okay, that's why we have Philippians 4. That, that says whatever things are true, whatever things are pure, whatever things are of good report, mm -hmm. think on those things, okay? Get out of, you know, Joyce Meyer has this teaching on a stinking thinking, okay? Right. If anybody mm -hmm. knows about Joyce Meyer, right. okay, she's got a lot of, a lot of great teaching, yeah, okay? She and she talks about the battlefield of the, uh, of the mind. Yeah, that whole okay? concept began with Joyce Meyer. Mm -hmm. So we got to watch yeah. what we think. We got to take captive every thought. Okay, so a thought zooms in there. Mm -hmm. Well, he, he's looking at you the wrong way. He doesn't like you. And, you know, that's all thoughts of rejection and stuff from the yeah. devil. we got to say, no, I rebuke that thought in Jesus' name. Yes. Okay, I don't believe that. That's wrong in Jesus' name. I'm going to believe the best out of that person. Right. Okay, we got to take that thought captive. we got to grab mm -hmm. it and say, no, I rebuke it in Jesus' name. Okay, amen. So that's just a little, little bit on, on that scripture. But once again, God has given us weapons of warfare to right. overcome our problems, overcome the devil. Right. Okay. And I would think that that scripture all by itself would once and for all settle the question about whether you have to, if there's spiritual warfare. Yeah. I mean, huh. I mean, you don't need weapons if you're not in a war. Yeah. So what Apostle Jeff is referring to, there's some factions out there, there's some... Yeah. Some religious I'm doctrines. okay, you're okay, everything's okay. If God said it, that'll. I believe it, that settles it. Well, listen, you, I'm glad you believe it. Amen. But you're going to find out there's some stuff out there that's going to come against what you believe. And you better understand the blood covenant and our inheritance right. and our right to use spiritual weapons. Amen. So uh, there are some people, lots some folks out there who don't believe in spiritual warfare. Yeah. And uh, we always wonder how is that possible? And it's all over Scripture. Yes. Amen. And uh, and and there's even even Jesus Himself said, mm -hmm. Amen. Uh, where's that Scripture, Jeff? Uh, it says that that um um, uh, this is a real paraphrase. Uh, he's come to. Is this a Lindenism? Yeah, I'm sorry. Okay. Uh, it's vaguely in my memory here, but uh -huh. where he was. Um, even he set one against the other, mm -hmm. okay? Yeah. Um, and even with, within the, 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 the family. Mm -hmm. And the violence taken by force mm -hmm. is another scripture, right. okay? And, uh, you, know, and yeah. you know, Christ came to save us, amen? Yeah. And, and part of the, of the whole uh, theme of salvation was, you know, he had to stir the pot. You know, he had to correct. He had to tell people you're wrong, amen? He had to voice truth. And that separated people, okay? Amen? And some are going to believe them and some not, okay? Amen. But anyway, we are joint heirs with Christ and we have access to grace and mercy. What a wonderful thing. Yes. Oh, it's a wonderful thing. Amen? Mm -hmm. uh, Romans 8, 17 says we are joint heirs and co-heirs with Christ, mm -hmm. meaning that we share in his suffering but also in his glory. Oh, somebody says Matthew 10, 34. Let's check it out. Uh, we had scripture born. Amen. Yeah, Amen. I, I uh, thank you, whoever did that. I yeah, appreciate I, it. I didn't bring my. That uh, that, that was a real. Uh, <laughs> my concordance down here with me. <laughs> that that was a real paraphrase. Yeah. Amen. Uh, thank you, Lord. You know, I think God. I came to bring peace on earth. Yeah, that's a good peace, one. But a sword. But a sword. Yeah, that's a thirty-five. Is it? A man against his father. Or that's father, it. Against her mother and her daughter-in-law against mm -hmm. her mother-in-law. Well, there's plenty of my daughter-in-laws against mother-in-laws, isn't Amen. there? Yeah. <laughs> Amen. Thank you, whoever whoever said that in Matthew 10, 34. That's exactly right. Yes. Okay? Amen. See, I'm going to so, break that concordance. Okay, okay, all right. Amen. <coughs> so we have access to grace and mercy. Amen. Amen. Uh, 1 Peter 3, 7 says we're joint heirs with Christ. Amen. And, you know, grace, I, I, I don't think a lot of us understand grace. I, I don't think I understood it for many years. Mm. Amen. And, uh, uh, you know... Grace is unmerited favor. Amen. Right. There's nothing we can do to earn it. Right. There's, you know, God just gave it to us. I mean, it, it, you know, salvation is a free gift. Mm -hmm. Praise God. All the things that, that the Lord has given to us, it's just freely given because he loved us so much. Mm -hmm. Amen. That he died for us and shed his blood. Yeah. Amen. 
And so, you know, yeah, lot, I mean, think about it. When you got saved, how holy were you? Yeah. How holy was I? Yeah. Not much. No. But he loved us anyway. He loved us anyway. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Amen. That's that's right. That's how Amen. amazing his love and grace is. Amen. And we're more than that, we're even spiritual firstborns of God. Right. Okay? The scripture speaks about that. And and you know, from the old testament, when you look at what happened with, with the firstborn. Okay. They got a double portion. The firstborn got the double portion. Amen, Jeff. You're the firstborn and the only born, so you, you right. got the double portion. I'm the first and the last. Amen. I get the whole portion. <laughs> I'm glad I'm with with you. I got part of the double double portion. Yeah. Amen. So we can declare the double portion. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's why we can declare the, the the double portion. It's our birthright. That's right. Because we're the firstborn of God. It's our inheritance. Amen. It's our inheritance. Right. Right. So that tells you right there. No matter what's going on in life, you declare the double portion. Mm -hmm. Don't let the devil rob from you. Amen. It's our right for the double portion. Right. Amen. Isn't that huge? Yeah. Praise God. Amen. I now, want the whole portion, though, not just the double part. Amen. Amen. He Praise gave God. us everything. Amen. He gave us everything. Yes, he yes. did. Okay. Now, we even have healing and restoration, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. We got all kinds of wonderful scriptures here. Look at that. You know, Psalm uh, 30, verse 2. Oh, Lord, my God, I cry to you, and you healed me. Amen. Mm -hmm. Psalm 34, 19. Many yeah, are the afflictions of the righteous. Just, uh, that, that first one you had, Psalm 32, sure. what? Uh -huh, Is right it there. on this one? Uh, yeah. Psalm 30, verse 2. Verse 2. Oh, Lord, my God, I cried unto you, and you have healed me. Amen. With, pre with those precious promises in the scriptures, you have to look at what the condition is. And here, just in that one verse, you see this. I cried unto you. I cried. Cried. That means it wasn't a narrow prayer. It wasn't a wishing and a hoping. It wasn't thinking maybe someday. Mm -hmm. When you stand pray and pray and believe that you receive him, you shall have him. So, Lord, I cry out to you to heal me now. In Jesus' name, I stand on your word. And Amen. That's how you receive. Amen. That's, that's Amen. good. What's the that's condition? Amen. Cry out. Mm -hmm. What's the result? You get healed. Amen. Praise God. Mm -hmm. Amen. So that's that's part of our inheritance. There's so many scriptures. There's so much. Amen. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers them out of them all. Right. right? That's Psalm 34, 19. Amen. Mm -hmm. There's many different type of afflictions. Mm -hmm. Okay. You can be afflicted medically. You can be afflicted emotionally. You can be afflicted even with finance. Okay. Uh, family troubles. Right. All kinds of stuff. Right. Many are the afflictions of the righteous. Now, notice what that scripture says. The righteous will be afflicted. <laughs> mm -hmm. Why? Because we live in a sinful world. Right. Okay? We, we're in this world. Right. So there's things that are going to happen. They don't know you because they didn't know him. And and the devil is going to attack you because you, yeah, you're a believer. That's right. All right? So many are the afflictions, but... Well, even if the devil wasn't here, unbelievers would still attack you. Yep. You know? So. But the Lord delivers us out of them oh, all. Yeah. That's our promise. That's our right. Our inheritance. Okay? Yes, it is because of the blood. Mm -hmm. And so, if you haven't seen the deliverance yet, keep on. Right. Amen. So, if you're out of work because of this pandemic mm -hmm. or the plague, you have a right as your an inherited right to get not just your job back, but a better one. Mm -hmm. Okay. He delivers them out of them all. Amen. He's going to deliver you out of unemployment. He's going to mm -hmm. deliver you. Out of Amen. not having enough Amen. money. He's going to deliver you out of not having an opportunity. Mm -hmm. Amen. Right. And I. this is one of my favorite scriptures, Psalm 103.3. Amen. Mm -hmm. He forgives all our iniquities and heals all our diseases. Mm -hmm. Praise God. Amen. I don't know about you, but I'm claiming that daily. Amen. Amen. He heals all our diseases. Right. Amen. And that's talking about the here and now. That's not right. talking about the millennium or, you know, yeah. when we get to heaven. No, that's right well, now. You don't need healing in heaven. Amen. It's right now. Amen. Well, some people say it's, you know, maybe God doesn't want to heal me. No, the word Why? of God is very clear. Amen. Why would God not want to heal you? I am the Lord that healeth thee. Okay. Mm -hmm. Amen. Excuse the mm -hmm. King James. Right. All right. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Oh, I'm just going to give you a freebie here. First John 3, 8. Yeah. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. Right. There's warfare right there. Yeah. Okay. Amen. Uh, here's another good one. They're all good. 
Third John, uh, 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 Third John two, beloved, I wish above all things that you prosper and be in health, even as your soul prospers. Right. So, the promise is, where'd you get? The promise is that we may be prosper and be in health. Amen. What is the condition? Even as your soul prospers. Mm -hmm. We're going to do a message one of these days on soul prosperity. That's right. Because mm -hmm. that, that's even better than having a lot of money in the bank. Well, they'll uh, take money in the bank, too. Well, you have both. Have it's both. your inheritance. Yes. But, you're claiming a double portion. Yes. But we'll double up on the devil. Amen. Right here. Right. Well, I'm just pointing out again. The promise is pros prosper and be in health. Yes. The condition is, even as your soul prospers. Mm -hmm. So without a prosperous soul, you can have problems in your area of your prosperity and your health. Right. There's a lot more there than that. Oh, I can there, get into, there's a lot of stuff there. Uh, you know, this okay. Is, today's your day. So, so, <laughs> <laughs> so soul, okay, so let's just delve in that just a little bit, Jeff. We have, okay. we have plenty of time. Um, right. Soul prosperity, right. okay? All right, so soul, what is the soul? It's your mind, your will, and your emotions. Mm -hmm. Okay? So uh, so when we're talking about soul prosperity, mm -hmm. right, what's going on in your mind? What's going on in your right. will? Mm -hmm. Okay? What's going on in your emotional realm? That's right. Okay? Yes. All right? You know, a healed soul is better than a healed body. Now, you're entitled to both. Amen. But, you know, uh, somebody can have a perfectly healthy body and a... Mm -hmm. uh, unhealthy soul. That's right. And that's torment, man. Right. You know, being uh, disturbed mm -hmm. all the time, being angry. Tormented, right. Tormented. Um, yeah. You know, just going through, always remembering everything that happened in the past and right. how much it hurt you and this right. and that. And I'm not make, making light of any of those things. I've had those problems too. And still do from time to time. But thank God I learned how to fight it. Amen. So, anyway. Praise God. And uh, how, how, how do you fight it, honey? Or how do I fight it? Out there, yeah. Well, I, Just do a little teaching there. Well, the way I do it primarily is I stay in the Word. Amen. Mm -hmm. And then... Uh, you have to take every thought captive, too. Right, yeah. Well, that, that, you, that's, that's a big part of it. You know, read the Word out loud. Your head has to stop to hear what your mouth's got to say. Amen. <laughs> so that's a good way to shut your head up. Say, that's hey, very good. shut up. And that's then very start good. reading yeah. And my method for doing it, and when I get negative thoughts, I, I, I start rebuking it right, 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 right. Yeah, all the time. You're the, you know, the, the devil is always trying to do something. Well, that's amazing okay? because you're such so, a positive yeah, Well, person. thank you, honey, but you know, you, you got to work at it. Well, okay, you can't, you can't be weary in, in well-doing because he doesn't give up, so we can't give up. Mm -hmm. Okay, and I also plead the blood of Jesus over my mind. Okay, yeah. I even, I, I anoint myself, I usually anoint myself with oil on a daily basis, especially mm -hmm. when in the middle of all this plague and all of this stuff, and we're I'm claiming healing for our bodies and mm -hmm. things, okay, and I anoint myself, I say, Lord, I anoint myself right mm -hmm. now in Jesus' name, I rebuke any of these negative thoughts, mm -hmm. and, uh, and a lot of times there's fear and rejection that likes to come against our mind, okay, the, the devil wants, a, wants you to make, a, wants you to feel rejected. You know, uh, yeah. like you're not good enough, you're not qualified, mm -hmm. uh, you know, you're not going to make it. All of those negative thoughts, that's all rejection and, uh, you know, and, and you got to rebuke that. I, I just bind that spirit of rejection mm -hmm. and those lies and I command them off of me right now in Jesus' mm -hmm. name. And then you want to follow up with, with the Word of God. Mm -hmm. Amen. And, and so the, uh, the Word of God says, I'm accepted in, in the Beloved. Right. Praise God. The Word mm -hmm. of God says... That the blood has cleansed me from all unrighteousness. That's right. Amen. So it's important to know these scriptures. Yeah, the blood cleansed you from how many? All. 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 All so you got to speak all the word, remember? Amen. Speak the word. Amen. Always speak the word. Amen. Amen. That's our sword. We're going to fight back Amen. with the word of God. Amen. Amen. Now, I just want to mention uh, Job uh, chapter 1, verses 2 through 4. God even will restore things to us. Mm -hmm. Amen. He says, I will restore everything to you. All that the locusts and the, and the canker worms have, have eaten and mm -hmm. taken from you. And so God is into restoration. Amen. Mm -hmm. So these are just some of the precious promises. There's so Amen. many. Amen. Amen. Important Amen. Yes. And so now we're going to go on to the next topic. Why don't we see the inheritance? Right. Okay. How come we don't always see the manifestation? Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, all right. Unfortunately, sometimes we don't know what really belongs to us. And that's one of the things that we're trying to get through with this sermon today. Mm -hmm. Amen. That you know 
what your your inheritance and what your birthright is. Yes. Praise God. We have to mm -hmm. understand that when Jesus shed His blood, it doesn't matter. It, it matters no more what what you did. All mm -hmm. you got to do is say, "Lord Jesus, come into my heart," mm -hmm. and and you and you do your best to serve Him. Of course. Praise God, and His blood covers you. Mm -hmm. Okay. So a lot of times we just don't know. You know, we're ignorant of of what we really have. Mm -hmm. Another thing is spiritual apathy. Mm -hmm. Okay, sometimes, you know, when we get worn down yeah. and, and we, we lay down our, our weaponry. Mm -hmm. And that's why through this whole thing I've been encouraging you, mm -hmm. you know, don't be weary in well-doing. Don't if be you weary need... in praying. Don't be worried, right. weary in worship. Mm -hmm. Don't be weary in speaking in other tongues. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? You've got to keep going. you got to keep going. Mm -hmm. And if you do get tired, which is human, well, okay, then get a friend. Amen. Mm -hmm. Get a buddy. And, and, and let them help you. Let me just add something here. If, if you're getting sleepy reading the word or something like that, take a little nap. Mm -hmm. There's nothing wrong with that. And come right back to it again. Just come back to it, though. Yeah, that's all. But just right. be sure to come back to it. Right. I snooze out in my chair all the time. Amen. Then he comes back to it. Amen. Amen. All right, so there's spiritual apathy, what, what we call. People get lazy and they get tired mm -hmm. and they get weary. Okay, so you don't you don't want to give up. You know, Proverbs chapter 20, 13 says, it talks about poverty. Mm -hmm. And and it says, love not sleep, <laughs> not that kind, uh, unless you come to poverty. <laughs> okay, meaning consistency, consistent laziness. You know, yeah. there's, there's some people in this, like, retirement mode or something, all they want to do is sit around. Right. Okay, now, you know, you can, you, you can sit and still be reading the Word of God and still be studying and still be thinking about the Lord, you mm -hmm. know, but this is talking about, that they're lazy, okay? They don't want to do anything. It's a spiritual apathy. Right. And if that's you today, I definitely want to pray for you right, right. now. No kidding. Okay, because that is a trick of the enemy, okay? Mm -hmm. And especially as aging comes on a person right. and all of that, okay, then you got aches and pains and the devil, you know, we've got this whole thing about retirement in our country. Oh, yeah. Okay? And, uh, you know, you don't retire from God. And you don't retire, usually you don't retire from ministry, Okay? Ministry is a lifelong call, amen. And God doesn't, you know, God doesn't put His anointing on somebody and raise you up so that you come to a certain place and say, "Well, now I'm going to give up." Mm -hmm. Now, if you medically can't handle it and it's time to go on to glory, that's something else, right. or or God takes you out of the ministry or something like that. But uh, barring that, okay, we want to keep going. There's a principle of endurance to the end. Okay, so I'm going to pray for you right now. If you're in in that mode where you kind of lost your first love and you're not excited about ministry anymore, you're not excited about the things of God, that's a devil, I'm telling you. Okay, it's not you. That's a devil. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, we just take authority right now over all anybody who's experiencing spiritual apathy, Father, and, uh, and on laziness, there's, a, there's an apathy that has come on them, Father. I break the power of that right now in Jesus' name, and we decree right now that they'll be energized again. They're going to come back to their first love. Amen. And Father, they're going to obey you. They're going to pay their vows. Amen. They're going to mm -hmm. fulfill what they they said they're going to do. And Lord, I just thank you that you're going to touch them. Just mm -hmm. touch them, Lord, and energize them and rejuvenate them, Lord. One of the words this year from the prophets was that God was going to refresh us and rejuvenate us. Mm -hmm. And so, Father, we release that right now in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Uh, something else that prevents us from attaining our inheritance is fear. Yeah. Okay, the enemy will try to come on you with a spirit of fear, right. and and he'll say, oh, you you you're you're not ready for that, and and you're not going to be able to handle it. You're going to yeah. be a failure, and uh, everything you did before didn't even accomplish anything, and and yeah. you're not going to be able to do anything in the future, and mm -hmm. all that junk is from the devil. Yeah, you, you can't grow without stepping out in faith and taking a chance. Amen. You know what I mean? Amen. So. So, you know, it, it takes courage to possess the promise, okay? Amen? When the, when the spies went into the land, they saw a lot of giants, oh, yeah. okay? Mm -hmm. they had, somebody had to be courageous and come back and say, we can take the land, Amen. okay? Mm -hmm. There were only two that said that, right. and those two made it in. Joshua everybody everybody else right. died, yep. okay? That whole generation right. like that. So that's what fear does. Fear will mm -hmm. kill you, okay? Fear mm -hmm. will kill your ministry, Fear will, will kill uh, your anointing, okay? Right. Feel and that, and, and, you know, I just feel kind of feel like right at the minute that we have to talk about the, the evil report. Mm -hmm. See, Joshua and Caleb came back and said, we can take the land, 
they're bred for us, we can run them over. Mm -hmm. And the other 10 said, oh no, they're huge, they're giants, they have big walled cities, they have spears like a weaver's beam, they're gonna, mm -hmm. and this and that and the other thing. It's important who you listen to. Yeah. And if you notice that, that ratio there, mm. 10 negatives to two positives, yeah. or one in five, you could say. Mm -hmm. It's been my experience, that's pretty much the way it runs. Mm -hmm. One word of encouragement and five negative reports. You can't do it. Mm -hmm. You don't have the education. You don't have the talent. You don't have this. You don't have that. You're from the wrong side of the tracks. Mm -hmm. Meany, meany, meany. All that baloney. There's mm -hmm. nothing in the Word of God that says you have to believe that. Mm -hmm. And then on the, right on the other hand, you can encourage yourself in the Lord and the power of His might. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, uh, you know, there, if, here's the thing. If God says to you do something, you can do it, or he wouldn't have told you to. He's not a fool. That's right. He's not mm -hmm. going to send a carpenter to do an electrician's job. Amen. You know? And so there's, I just mm -hmm. want to encourage you today, that today where there's so much, well, the television's always been negative, the news mm -hmm. reports. Mm -hmm. You know, there's so much negativity, I think people like to hear about negativity. Because they can point to, or I think, we think it within ourselves, well, I got it bad, but they got it worse. And somehow there's comfort in that, <laughs> you know? Well, you know, be a Joshua, be a Caleb, mm -hmm. you know? They're bred for us. They're not going to stomp on that turkey. You know Amen. what I'm saying? That's, that's right. Let courage arise. Let, let faith arise. Let God arise and his yes. enemies be scattered. There we go. Amen. Okay. Something else that, that holds us back, there is an element of obedience also. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yes, there's grace. But, mm -hmm. you know, faith without works is dead and, mm -hmm. and we have to obey God. Okay. John 14, 21 says, if you love the Lord, then you'll obey him. Mm -hmm. Okay. So if we're in rebellion, then you're, you're really saying you don't love God, mm -hmm. okay? Because the word is clear. He who has my commandments and keeps them is he who loves me. And he who loves me will be loved by my Father, and I will love him and manifest myself to him. Amen? So if you want more of the presence of the Lord and more of the manifestation of God in your life, which also brings power and anointing, amen, we need to keep his commandments. Mm -hmm. So we need to say, okay, what has God told us to do? Okay, there's there's command, there are things in the Bible that we know we're supposed to do. And then when he speaks to our heart, okay, there's also things that we have to obey. Okay, and so, and so that's one of the biggest things is that, you know, to have an ongoing relationship with Jesus, we need to obey him. Okay, mm -hmm. praise God. And that's, that's, that's our litmus uh, test. For how we know if if we love him okay and so i want to encourage you today just remember some of these principles all right we also have to have faith right you know as i just said faith without works you know you know is dead okay so how do we apply this uh, in, in our life today all right well we're in this situation with the virus the pandemic this plague okay but the, but the prophets have declared that this is a new era in christ it's not just a new season or a new day Right. All right, just like my husband and I were talking, you know, you know, this this morning, we know it's a new era because we're sitting here in the middle of a plague mm -hmm. in 2020. Right. Okay, who would think in our lifetime we'd even right. see this? Right. Okay, this is really something. And, and the thing that was amazing about it to me is none of the prophets saw this coming. Yeah. And the bishop and, didn't. Right. No, no one did. This was almost yeah. like it was hidden from the from the, the prophets mm -hmm. but now that it's here the prophets have to see where we're going to go and get out of this right and I understand what god is doing with with this yeah and i think one mm -hmm. of the things he's doing right now is you know mm -hmm. i yeah you know, i used to talk to people and and try to help them and tell them you need to read your word you need to pray you need to read your word i haven't got time for that pastor listen you don't even have to drive to work right now right amen so you have you are without an excuse. That's right. Amen. And I believe this is the time and season mm -hmm. that God wants to plant new seeds in our hearts mm -hmm. for what he's going to do in the coming season. This plague was allowed by God, but the devil sent it for a reason. 
Yeah. And the reason is, is the wave of the spirit that's coming. Mm -hmm. Now, when I say that, that doesn't mean when they say tomorrow, okay, the plague's over, you can go outside again. No, mm -hmm. it's going to take time. Mm -hmm. This economy isn't going to snap out of it in a week. It's going to take a year, two, maybe three years just to get back to where it was. We shut our whole country down because of this. Yeah. And so that means that gives everything and everybody a new start. Mm -hmm. When everything stops, you can regather yourself and mm -hmm. start again from a new place. Mm -hmm. I believe God wants us to start again from a new place. Right. And so that dovetails into my next thought. This is a day of birthing. Mm -hmm. Okay. This, yes. is a, this is a day for you to come uh, that, forth. That's what I was Amen. To think There's of. a launching. There's a birthing. Okay. And, mm -hmm. and that's why we're in a new era. You know, and like I mentioned the other night, one of the symbols the Lord gave me was Noah's Ark. Mm -hmm. He had told me several weeks before mm -hmm. this, prepare the Ark. Noah prepared an Ark to the saving of now his that family. That was before the uh, plague. Mm -hmm. He told you to prepare an Ark. Right. I remember right. you saying that. I didn't know exactly what you meant. Yeah. And so, well, I knew what you meant, but I didn't so, know why. So the Lord had been telling me, prepare, prepare, prepare. So mm -hmm. we were, you know, I was stocking food. I was yeah. checking bills. I was... You know, because honestly, at that time, I wasn't sure for the Lord. I knew there was going to be restrictions in the, to the house and various things, uh, you know. And so I was telling my husband, I'm still getting Noah prepared an ark. And the Lord even had me buy a little a little bye-bye baby Noah's ark, you know. And so he was showing me through that, that but God preserved us. He's preserving us. We're in the ark. We are preserved. And his blood is over us. Amen. And it's you know the, the Passover blood, the, the 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 Lamb of God's blood is is over our doorposts, right. and the and the virus is passing over. The death angel has passed over. Praise God, Amen. because we're spiritually in the land of Goshen. We're in that sure. ark, okay. Sure. But this is a new day of birthing. Mm -hmm. Don't let the devil talk you out of your birthright, okay. Right. This is this is part because of the blood. Mm -hmm. God is launching us into something new now. Right. Amen. And we've never been this way before. Right. Okay, mm -hmm. so you got to let go of the past. Right. What worked in the past may not work in the future. Yeah, I believe there's some things that used to work that aren't going to work now. That's right. You know? We're in a new season. Yeah. Okay, just like uh, Apostle Enos prophesied to me that God had moved me from 1.0 to 2.0. Well, in software, 1.0 to 2.20 is a new generation. Mm -hmm. I didn't even understand at the time what he was prophesying to me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, but that's what we're in a new era. Mm -hmm. all, all right, so be careful here. Uh, mm -hmm. All right, I don't want to lose this. All right, uh, so all right, so this is this is a day of birthing. Mm -hmm. Okay, praise God. So God, you know, has uh, prepared us and saved us mm -hmm. for such a time as this, Jeff. Mm -hmm. Okay, and I had that this mm -hmm. morning. Everybody who's listening, everybody who's in this generation right now, mm -hmm. I'm going to tell you what. Uh, my husband had a quadruple heart bypass in 2014. He died on the operating table, and and we we prayed him back. Okay, mm -hmm. all right. He could have been gone in 2014. Mm -hmm. That's six years ago. Yeah. I was in Iraq in 2012. Many times I could have gotten blown up. On 9 11, I could have gotten killed. Mm -hmm. Okay, I have a book out, uh, The Pentagon Miracle. God mm -hmm. saved me on 9 11. I was right in the impact zone. That's 2001. Okay, there's many times we could have been killed. And God saved us. He told me yesterday morning, right? We are here for such a time as this. Mm -hmm. Okay, He saved us for this time. So everybody listening, you are you have been saved for this time. Mm -hmm. You are here for such a time as this. Mm -hmm. Any one of us could have been killed at any time or been medically mm -hmm. incapacitated. The devil tried to incapacitate me this whole year. Okay, and, and but God, praise God, Amen. is raising me up. Amen. Mm -hmm. Because he said, you know, I have I saved you for such a time as this. Mm -hmm. Okay, so there's a mission for us. Amen. There's a destiny for us, there's a calling for us. There's a reason for us to be here at this time. Amen? Mm -hmm. Don't miss your time of visitation with Jesus. Okay? Don't, don't miss your, your, your calling. Okay? Praise God. Mm -hmm. All right? So, honey, did you have anything to add, add to that? I see no, you're looking at scripture. Not. Okay. No, that's okay. I'm All right. Do that. We're not victims. We're victorious. Mm -hmm. Amen? We overcome by the blood and by the word of our testimony. Right. Amen? Praise God. And we take back everything the enemy has stolen as we press forward. Amen. All right. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus.
All right, so honey, I'm going to just ask you to pray just to close this, okay. and then we're going to go into the next part. Father, I thank you, Lord, for the inheritance. Yes, God. Your lines have fallen to me in a pleasant place. That means the borders of my inheritance are beautiful. Thank you, Lord, that you yourself are my inheritance. I get to inherit you. Oh, man. Amen. I get the chills every time I think about that. Amen. And, and we're so grateful to all that you've done. Amen. Lord, may this yes. word sink into the hearts of God's people. May we start thinking and speaking the word of God to that mountain. This mm -hmm. plague will end. Yes. Our jobs will come back. Our economy will come back. Our personal families are going to be healthy and mm -hmm. prosperous. And we thank you, Lord, for all that you have done and are doing for us in this time yes. of reset. Mm -hmm. Amen. We thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Okay, Amen. we're going to transition at this point. Thank you, honey, for joining me. Okay. Okay. And uh, we're, we're going to go into uh, prophetic ministry. All right, and we're going to ask uh, Pastor Andrea to get some names uh, to, together on the other end. Amen. And we will go ahead and uh, we'll, we'll I'm prophesy. I'm going to transition to okay. my chair upstairs. All right. Okay. Don't don't sleep, honey. <laughs> I wouldn't think. I wouldn't dream of it. Okay. Amen. All right. <laughs> praise God. All right. So for those of you listening, uh, if you have a have a recorder, you can go ahead and re record it also through the Facebook. And I'm also going to record it here. And then uh, what happens is I send it to Pastor Andrea. And she will go ahead and uh, send it out to you. Uh, obviously, we need to have your email address uh, to send it out. Amen. So uh, if you're not on our mailing list uh, or uncertain about that, please uh, uh, send Pastor Andrea uh, your e email so that we can make sure to get, get this word to you. Amen. Um, and just another thought uh, that uh, came to me uh, just a second ago. You know, what's also important in, in this timing right now is that we decree a thing and it shall be established, okay? The prophets had said that, that 2020 is the year of the mouth. It's 5780. So uh, speaking the word of God is especially very important right now, amen? And so uh, we have to, as I said, decree a thing and it shall be established. I believe that's uh, Job 2028. 20, and so it's very important, amen, that our words line up with the word of God. Because the word of God is the authority. And so it's not just speaking any old thing. Okay, You're not going to say, well, you know, I'm, I'm going to decree I'm going to have a Cadillac tomorrow. All right, well, if the Lord unctioned you to say that, and, and you know, he, he gave you that confirmation, then great, go for it. Okay, but whatever we declare, we want to make sure it's backed by the word of God. Amen? So, for example, all right, uh, for healing. Okay, I'm declaring healing on, on my body daily. Okay, many times during the day. And so I say, I decree right now, my body is healed right now in Jesus' name because the word of God says, I am the Lord that healeth thee. And many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers me out of them all. So whatever you decree, you always back up with the word of God because we just talked about it. The word of God is our authority. Amen? And God watches his word. He uh, watches over his word to perform it. Amen. The word of God is true. It says, let every man be a liar, but let God be true. God's word is always true. And so we have to keep that principle of endurance and you keep on. Don't be weary in well-doing. Amen. Okay. All right. So let's uh, prophesy today to uh, Darian Williams. All right. Once again, we, uh, we appreciate all of our listeners today. Thanks for uh, tuning in. Amen. So this is uh, Prophet Dr. Linda, and uh, this is for Darian Williams. Amen, Darian. Father, I just thank you right now for Darian. And, uh, and the Lord says, Son, I'm raising you up to new levels, says the Lord. And the Lord says, Even uh, the things that you heard today are stirring in, in your spirit afresh and anew. And the Lord says, You know many of these principles, uh, but there were a few nuggets uh, that really unctioned you today. And, and, and the Lord says, uh, One of them was the same one that hit Apostle Jeff, that, uh, that uh, the Lord is your inheritance. Amen. You have a great and precious inheritance. And God says, You're the firstborn spiritually. And so the double portion is yours. And the Lord says, I want you to claim that double portion, says God. And the Lord says, you're going to rebuke rejection. You're, you're going to re rebuke uh, destruction. And you're going to rebuke lack, uh, says the Lord. And I want you to claim your spiritual inheritance uh, that you have no lack, says God. Amen. And the Lord says, I am providing all of your need. And God says, even in this next season, I'm going to provide you new employment. There's going to be a new job. 
uh, coming for you, says the Lord. And I'm going to open up opportunities for you that you've not seen before, says the Lord, because you have been faithful and you're standing on my word. And so the Lord says, proclaim the word, decree a thing and it shall be established, says God. And the Lord says that I'm even doing a healing work within in your body. I'm healing your heart. There's some things from the past, some emotional soul hurts uh, that are still there. And the Lord says that I'm going to even link you up with some other people, uh, says God, that are going to be able to even pray with you and, and impart healing to you. But the Lord says even today, there's healing that is starting right now. And so, Father, in the name of Jesus, I just thank you for Darian. Father, we release a healing uh, right now, even in the inner man, in, in his soulish area, his emotional realm. Right now, I bind rejection in Jesus' name. Any, any uh, um, the abuses from the lineage that have come down and tried to torment him uh, and, and afflict his mind, I break that right now. Mind-binding spirits and witchcraft to bind you in Jesus' name, and I command you off of him right now in Jesus' name. And Father, we call forth the fresh job, the new job for him, and there's a fresh hope right now in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Okay, this next one is for uh, Jennifer Fraser. Hi, Jennifer. Good to, good to hear from, from you. Amen. And so, Father, we just uh, lift up Jennifer to you right now in Jesus' name. And daughter, the Lord says that, that, that I see the hurts from days gone by. And God says, I'm still healing some of those wounds. And, 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 and the Lord says uh, that, uh, daughter, going forward, there's a fresh hope for you. And I'm going to open up even a new employment opportunity for you also, says the Lord. And the Lord says, I want you to cast your bread upon the water right now. Uh, send out your resumes in all your areas that you are skilled in, says the Lord, and see what I'm going to do. Because God says, amen, as you cast your bread upon the water, meaning send your resumes out, okay, God says that some are going to come back to you. There's going to be people that are going to pick up on that. And the Lord says, opportunity is coming for you. And I see, and Jennifer, I see three doors of opportunity opening for you amen and one of them is job one of them is relationship and one of them is finance amen and so the lord says that he's opening up a new opportunities in in these venues and 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 the lord says jennifer just know that this is a new day he doesn't want you looking back at the old he wants you to bind depression bind rejection amen and take those thoughts captive and i'm hearing him say uh, get some of that Joyce Meyer teaching. She has great teaching on, on that. Get into her books. Study her books. She came out of a lot of that. And, and the Lord says, get a hold of taking, you know, take every thought captive to the obedience of Christ. And the Lord says, you're going to have to like brainwash yourself. You're going to have to take the scriptures, take Philippians 4, and keep beating your mind up with it. I'm not going to be negative. I'm not going to think about, I rebuke that in Jesus' name. I rebuke depression because it's the enemy trying to rob you of joy. Okay, it's the enemy trying to rob you of hope. And the Lord says, I've given you a hope and a future, says God. I want you to lay hold. Lay hold of it, says God. Grab hold of it. Claim it. It's yours. You have, you have a birthright, says the Lord. This whole message today told you because of the blood of Jesus, you are the firstborn and you have a right to ownership to every promise in this book. And the Lord says, I have given you the authority and through the name of Jesus and through the blood. And daughter, I want you to rise up in this season. Speak into your situations. Say to that mountain, be thou removed. And the Lord says you're going to see great miracles and great exploits. So Father, in the name of Jesus, we just release that anointing right now to Jennifer, wherever she's at. I bind depression in every form and rejection right now. And I, I just take authority over those thoughts that are bombarding her mind. And I rebuke them. Right now, in the name of Jesus, and I lose joy, peace, and comfort. In the name of Jesus, Lord, let faith arise in her. In Jesus' name, amen. And we seal the word in Jesus' name, amen. All right, this is uh, for our couple, Kamal and Jenneth. Hi, hi guys, how, how you doing? Uh, for the Lord says that I'm raising you up afresh and anew. And the Lord says that you're a tag team ministry. You're called to the fivefold. And the Lord says that even in this season, uh, I'm even quickening you in new ways. And I'm bringing out nuggets of my word in brand new ways. And the Lord says, even today, as you heard the dialogue between Apostle Jeff and I, there were some new things that kind of struck you and, and really regurgitated in, in your spirit. And you went, ooh, yeah, that's right on. And so God says that uh, there's more of that that's going to be happening uh, as, as you read the word, as you listen to the word. And, uh, and, and, and the Lord says that in the, in the days ahead, three to five years, 
he's going to be opening up brand new ministry opportunities for you. Uh, for the Lord says you're called to the fivefold. But the Lord says don't let a spirit of fear come upon you. Uh, don't let a spirit of intimidation uh, talk you out of things or cause you to be fearful. Because the Lord says everything is going to happen in my timing and everything is going to be all right. So you don't have to worry about it. I'm in charge of the school of the Holy Spirit for your life. And the Lord says you're right on time. You're, you're doing exactly what you're supposed to be doing. And I'm proud of you, says the, says the Lord. Amen. And so, Father, in Jesus' name, we just seal that word upon my brother and sister right now. Uh, Father, I thank you for the fivefold uh, ministry that is upon their, their life. And I thank you, Father, that you're raising them up afresh and anew. I bind every form of uh, fear and intimidation right now that would try to hinder their walk and, and uh, try to talk them out of things. Amen. Be, be careful. Take every thought captive to the obedience of Christ. And, Father, we charge them with it right now. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, praise God. Okay, this word is for Katina Waller. Amen. Father, I just thank you for Katina. And the Lord says, daughter, even as you've listened today, you've been intrigued by some things. And, and the Lord says, uh, there's some aspects of the prophetic that are kind of new to you. But the Lord says, don't you know, daughter, you're also called to it. And, and so the Lord says, I'm going to be raising you up refreshing and anew uh, in, in the seasons that are ahead, says, says God. And, uh, and I just hear the Lord say that he's going to allow you to make some new Christian acquaintances, uh, and that there's going to be some new uh, ministries that you're going to be affiliated with and that uh, you're going to be drawn to. And the Lord says, that's because I'm raising you up in the prophetic, says God. And so, daughter, don't be intimidated uh, by these things, but even do as the Bereans did. You know, the Bereans in the Bible, it was, uh, they, they checked everything with the Word of God to make sure that it was true. And God says, whatever you've heard, uh, make sure it's in, in the Bible. Amen? Because God says that I'm training you, and I'm raising you, and there's a teaching gift upon you also. And so the Lord says that reading the Word, studying the Word is going to be very, very, very important to you. Amen? So if something seems like a little out of kilter, you know, whatever, check it with the Word. Okay? Amen. And uh, I just hear the Lord say that He loves you very much, and He's healing you on the inside. There's some wounds from days gone by some things and there's also a situation uh some situations that are around you right now and uh you've been kind of wondering uh what does god want you to do and uh the lord says daughter just get into that prayer closet and begin to speak to your mountains says the lord and one of the things that you're also going to do is you're going to claim revelation and so you say lord uh, use ephesians 119 and say lord enlighten my eyes that i may understand Amen. When God enlightens our eyes, that's bringing revelation. And so use that scripture and say, Lord, bring the revelation of the things that you have for me. Amen. Praise God. And the Lord says, when you do that, amen, God is going to bring fresh re revelation to you. And it's going to bring a peace and a comfort and an understanding to your heart. So, Father, in Jesus' name, we just release that to Katina right now in the name of Jesus. And I thank you, Lord, for her. And, Father, we stir her up in the prophetic. We call her to the prophetic right now in jesus name and i thank you for the teaching gift that's upon her father bring the teaching gift forward father and anoint her for it in jesus name amen praise god okay amen uh and this is d b song okay uh this is for d praise god father i thank you for d and the lord says that there's even been some recent shifting uh within your 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 life i'm sensing uh that there's been a significant shift in your personal life uh somehow and, and the Lord says that I'm, and that I'm in the shift. And God says that I'm shifting you more in the anointing also, says the Lord. Uh, for the Lord says that uh, in, in 2020, this is a, a season of shift where I'm birthing my people into new things. Uh, and, and remember what uh, the prophets have already said, that 2020 is the year of the greatest accomplishments. And this is going to set us up for the next uh, 10 years. So the Lord says I'm birthing you uh, into the prophetic I'm, I'm launching you into new realms of my anointing, says the Lord. And so the Lord says that even the recent shift that you had in your life physically and, and spiritually, the uh, Lord says that's a, that even is a sign of what's happening spiritually. So God says, be encouraged today, daughter. I've raised you up afresh and anew, and I've called you to ministry, and I'm blessing even all your immediate family. And I see that uh, because there's been a shift even in your immediate family. Uh, the Lord says that I'm blessing that. Amen. And I'm causing a new strategy to come forth uh, for you. So, Father, we just seal that word right now 
In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. All right, this word is for John uh, Singleton. Amen. Uh, for John, I, I just hear the Lord say that he wants you to know that he's with you, John. Uh, the, uh, the, the Lord is for you. He's not against you. Amen. And I, I hear him say there's been some loneliness. And, and, and the Lord says that he wants you to just take the word of God. Amen. Now, you know, when David had trouble, the, the, the word says that he encouraged himself in the Lord. Okay. The same with loneliness. You can get in the word. And when you get in the word and also praise him, when you, when you start praising God, amen, the anointing comes upon you and his presence will be, begin to infuse you. And that loneliness is going to leave. And you're going to bind that loneliness. I hear the Lord say, just bind that loneliness. Okay? Amen. And I'm also hearing him say to get on the phone and, out, and, and reach out to people. Talk with them. Amen. You can even call prayer lines. Do what you need to do to get out of the loneliness. Amen. Of course, keeping it godly. But the Lord says, as you praise me, says the Lord, I'm going to break off those things, says the Lord. And I see that there's been a little bit of depression also trying to come up upon you. And God says, I'm breaking that off this day. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, I come against that depression uh, right now, that loneliness. And I break the power of it over his life right now. And I say no more in Jesus' name. And I lose a peace and a comfort and a joy in Jesus' name. And so, Father, I just thank you for John. Uh, and, and the Lord says that uh, he's called you to business, John. I don't know what, what you do, but God says he's called you to business. So, Father, I release an anointing for entrepreneurship right now for business in the name of Jesus. And I thank you, Lord, for that business of anointing coming to the forefront in Jesus' name and strategies to him right now. And finance are going to be your portion. Wealth is your portion. Prosperity is your portion in Jesus' name. It's part of your birthright. But it's your portion in Jesus' name. Amen. And we seal that in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Okay. Um, Elsie, uh, uh, Barbara Frimpong's daughter. Okay. Hi, Elsie. How are you today? Amen. Praise God. God to see you. And thanks for tuning in. But Father, I just lift her up right now. And the Lord says you have that prophetic gifting, Elsie. Amen. And he wants you to use it. Okay. Amen. Go out there and use it. Even if it's on the telephone, on the Skype, or the Zoom, or whatever. The Lord says he wants you to be a blessing. Daughter, I'm with you. I'm for you, says the Lord. I'm raising you up to new heights. All the prophecies that have been given to you in the past are still a yea and amen. They are still valid, every one of them. And I hear the Lord say, you haven't lost anything. You haven't fallen short in anything. And I don't know what's going on with schooling right now. Amen. But I just hear the word school. Uh, Father, I just thank you for whatever schooling that she has to complete right now. In Jesus' name. And, Father, we just release uh, an encouragement to her in the name of Jesus to keep going. And, Father, I just hear the word funding, whatever funding she needs, whatever scholarships, whatever she needs. Father, we just command it to come forth right now. Amen. Because she's a king's kid. Amen. Praise God. And, Lord, you own the cattle on a thousand hills. Your arm is too short. It can't save. Amen. You can do all things. Uh, Lord, you even created a coin in the fish mouth. And so, Father, we thank you right now for supernatural prosperity on Elsie, and I hear that for the whole family. Uh, I release supernatural prosperity on you and your mother and your sister right now in Jesus' name. I come against any spirit of poverty, even coming down through the generations. Amen. And we break it right now in Jesus' name. And Father, we release blessing right now. Even Deuteronomy 28, the blessings of Deuteronomy 28, Elsie, are all yours and they belong to your family. Amen. Praise God. And Lord, we just seal that right now in jesus name amen all right praise god i'm gonna give pastor andrea a minute amen if there's any alibi fires today all right praise god thank you lord and so father we just thank you for this time amen we thank you for those who have tuned in today amen and uh lord we just seal the word in jesus name amen so while i'm waiting here i just want to thank you for tuning in today on behalf of my husband and i thank you very much and uh, we are Apostle Prophetess Jeff and Linda Herbert, and uh, we're from Covenant Life Church, ordained with Christian International. And it's our privilege, amen. We are honored uh, to be in ministry and to be speaking to you today, amen. We don't take the anointing for granted, amen. And uh, we're also aware to whom much is given, much is re required, and we're just honored to be in ministry. We're honored to be serving the Lord, amen. Thank, thank you, Lord. All right, praise God. Um, okay, we got one more person here. Um, all right, uh, praise God. 
Okay, uh, uh, already. Okay, so Pastor Andrea wanted me to, to just uh, explain this. Okay, um, there's about 40 plus people uh, on the um, Facebook right, right now. And so we don't have time to prophesy over all of them. Uh, so the instruction that I've given to the pastor is pick out some. Each time you tune in, we are going to be prophesying. Okay, and so... Uh, everybody in our church just about pro prophesies, but every time we have service, uh, we are going to be prophesying. And so you have opportunity to be prophesied to uh, every time that we are we are in service. So uh, Prophet Shayla uh, teaches and prophesies from 1 to 2 on Sundays. Uh, after service right now, uh, we're prophesying. Monday night, tomorrow night, we have discipleship class at 8 p.m., after that, I'm going to be prophesying. Uh, Tuesday is our prayer tabernacle at 7.30. That's a prayer time. Um, and uh, if, if uh, Pastor Andrea feels led to prophesy, she'll do it, but it's mainly a prayer time. And then Friday night is our table talk, and we prophesy after that also. But there's so many people dialing in, it's hard to get to every, everybody. Amen? So we try to get to those who haven't at least received one uh, pro prophecy. Okay? We try to spread the, spread the wealth. Okay, and uh, if you're local and you come to our church, uh, by the way, we have prophetic teams that after every service, uh, we, we you can go to our prophetic teams and, and get a prophetic word. Uh, that's if, if you're local and once the church opens back up. We also have healing teams, amen, that after every service, uh, we, we lay hands on the sick and, and, and they shall, shall recover. So what we're trying to do right now is at least... Uh, give everybody the opportunity to get one uh, prophecy, okay? And then if we have time and, and you're still tuning in, uh, we'll, we'll, uh, we can do more, all right? But we try to do about 10 to 15 or anywhere from 7 to 15 pro prophecies each uh, time, amen? And uh, we're trying to get to as many people as, as possible, all right? And uh, praise God. So, amen. Uh, so if you have already received a, a word, we will get to you again in, uh, turn, in, in, in turn once, once again, but just please be uh, patient, okay? Because again, we want to spread the wealth and we want to give everybody the opportunity to at least get a word one, one time, okay? Amen. All right, but just keep tuning in because when you tune in, your name will, will eventually pop, okay? All righty, um, there's Elsa Abraham. Okay, let's get to Elsa Abraham. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Praise God. All right, Elsa, uh, this is for you. Praise God. Father, we just thank you for Elsa. And Elsa, I'm just hearing the Lord say that he wants to bring some healing uh, to your body, some physical healing and some emotional healing in the soulish realm. Amen. And, and the Lord says, daughter, uh, there's been a season of time where it's like the enemy has beaten you up and you've come out of the wilderness and it's just been a, a dry time. But the Lord says that this is your oasis right now. Even in the midst of this famine. Even in the midst of this plague. God says, I have brought my people to a spiritual oasis. And I've given them promised land, says the Lord. And Elsa, I see you in my little bitty Noah's Ark. Amen. And God is transitioning you from the old into the new. Amen. And he says, daughter, let me do it. Let me transition you into the new, says God. Let go of the old. Let go of the old. Remember Philippians 4 says, forgetting those things which lay behind, we press on. Amen? We press on. We always want to press on towards the higher call and the greater works. God is always pressing on. Amen? He's never getting stuck in the past. Amen? And so the Lord says, don't get stuck in the past. Forget those things which lay behind. Forgive who you need to forgive. Uh, repent what you need to repent of. Ask the Lord for healing. The Lord says, go out and get healing. Uh, seek peace and pursue it. And go on, says the Lord. For the Lord says, I'm, I'm even pushing you into a new level of birthing, says the Lord. And so the Lord says, daughter, I am pleased with you. I am pleased with you and I love you, says God. And I'm for you and I'm not against you. I'm with you, says the Lord. And so if God be for you, who dare be against you? And, and the Lord says, I'm healing you from the wounds of days gone by. And I'm encouraging you this day to keep moving forward. Don't get stuck in the past. 
because the Lord says, I have great and precious promise for the, for you and things for you in the future, uh, says the Lord. But the Lord says, I want you to get up even spiritually, get up emotionally, uh, says God, and pursue those greater things now, says the Lord. Don't get stuck in the past. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, we just speak peace uh, to Elsa right now. We speak healing in the name of Jesus. I release healing to your physical realm, to your soulish realm, spirit, soul, body. Spirit, soul, and body. Be healed in Jesus' name. Amen. Elsa, I'm hearing a word of instruction for you. Over the next 10 days, take some oil and anoint yourself with oil. Okay? And if you don't have any uh, anointed oil from a church, buy some olive oil. Extra virgin olive oil. And you're going to lay your hands on it. Okay? Just like this, you say, Lord, I anoint this oil right now with the anointing uh, uh, from you, Father, in Jesus' name. And then you're going to take a little dab, and you're going to dab yourself with it every morning. And you're going to say, Lord, I anoint myself right now to receive of all that you have for me. Uh, Lord, in Jesus' name, I rebuke negative thoughts. I rebuke the past. And, Father, just cause me to look forward. I anoint myself to look forward and receive all that you have for me in, in my future. In Jesus' name. And, Lord, I want it. Yea and amen. Okay? So that's a little word of in instruction. That's what I hear the Lord saying to you. To do every day for the next 10 days, I would start today. I know he said start in, in the morning. Excuse me. Start tomorrow and go 10 days. Doing it every day. Father, in the name of Jesus. Lord, just help her right now. And Lord, I thank you. You're going to anoint her afresh and anew. In Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. All right. So we seal that word right now on Elsa in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Okay, Pastor. All right. And I it's, uh, it, oh, it's 4 o'clock. Okay, so we're going to stop there. Amen. And uh, once again, uh, we want to invite you to our website. Amen. It's www.covenant-life-church.org. Okay, we got a lot of stuff on our, our website. And uh, we also appreciate very much any donations that you can send to us. Amen. We still have bills to pay even during this time. Uh, we're still paying rent. Even though we're not in the, in the church, we have to still pay rent. Amen. And so we appreciate it very much. Uh, any donations that you, you can send would be much appreciated. Uh, there's, a, there's a give command uh, on our website, and uh, you can give through uh, PayPal or uh, ACH or credit card. Uh, you can also do text to give or uh, send a check through us uh, to our uh, P.O. box. We appreciate it very much. Uh, anything that you can do, whatever the Lord lays upon your heart uh, to bless us with, we sure appreciate. Amen. And we thank you for tuning in. Uh, please pray for us. Amen. Uh, that uh, we come in, we always want to pray. We come into the perfect will. We agree with the perfect will of God. We come into agreement with the perfect will of God. Amen. We want to do all that God has called us to do. We want to have a finisher's anointing to finish strong. Amen. In the missions that God has given us. And we say yea and amen to everything that God has given us. And we do want to finish, Lord, in Jesus' name. So, Father, we just seal the word right now. We charge it to the people in Jesus' name. And uh, again, I'm just hearing a re reminder. Um, okay, this is Sunday. Tomorrow night is our discipleship class. And uh, right now we're in phase three. We invite you to tune in uh, to Facebook tomorrow night at 8 p.m. It's all free. Amen. And uh, we're teaching the prophetic uh, right now. So if you want to be raised up in the prophetic and activated in the gifts of the spirit, amen, we're teaching that right now. Amen. And uh, also, you can join us Sundays from 1 to 2 Eastern Standard Time. Prophetess Dr. Shayla teaches a prophetic class. It's open to everybody. She Zooms it. And if you uh, type in your email address to Pastor Andrea right now, then uh, Prophetess Shayla will send you a link to the Zoom. And uh, you're going to really enjoy it. It's really good. And, uh, but then we also have Prayer Tabernacle on Tuesday night at 7.30. And Table Talk is Friday. Uh, also, a special thing that we're going to do this, this week uh, Apostle Jeff is getting with, with the men uh, to do a little men's fellowship uh, Thursday night at 7.30. Amen. There's going to be a dial-in. We're going to send out an e-blast, what we call an e-blast. We're going to send uh, a, a note out to everybody on our mailing list. And uh, men, if uh, you, you want to, uh, you know, be with Jeff, uh, Apostle Jeff, on Thursday night at 7.30, we invite you to do that. He's going to have a little time of Bible study, about one hour. And then uh, there's going to be prayer time and uh, whatever needs uh, that you have, uh, he's, he can, uh, can address it during that, during that time. So it's a special time for the men. Amen. It's a men's fellowship, men's Bible study group. 
Amen. That's this coming Thursday at 730. So once again, uh, men, if you're out there right now and you would like to participate in that, it's going to be a dial-in. Amen. You can put your uh, email address in our chat box right now, and uh, Pastor Andrea will make sure uh, that that's captured, and we will send you all the, in the information for Thursday night. Uh, I'd also like you to save the date, uh, May 15th. Uh, we are going to have a two-hour financial seminar. The Lord has laid it upon our heart that this is the time of transference of wealth. Okay? You know, just like the, just like the Israelites plundered the Egyptians, right now, uh, we're in a time of plague and famine, but God is prospering his people. He's showing himself strong. So the Lord laid upon our heart to do a financial seminar. Uh, it's actually going to be a three-part, and um, we're going to do part one and two. Uh, is, is going to be on uh, May 15th. And uh, we already have a part three done. Uh, we have a licensed minister who's part uh, of our con congregation uh, who is a financial expert. And uh, she has also done a part. So we're going to put those three parts together, and that's going to be a financial seminar. And But we invite you to tune in on uh, Friday night in place of the table talk. We are going to do a financial seminar. Or I should say that's what the table talk is going to be that night. It's going to be a two-hour financial seminar where Apostle Jeff and I are going to be teaching some principles of finance. And uh, we're also going to um, even uh, encourage you uh, to invest. And you don't have to have a lot of money to invest. And we're going to be teaching about that. Because we believe right now that there's an, there's an anointing on investments. Amen. And God has given us the power to get wealth. Deuteronomy 8.18 says that he's given us the power to get wealth. Amen. That's part of our inheritance. That's part of, of what the blood has bought us. Amen. And so there's in this realm, in the natural realm, God wants you to prosper. Amen. And so we are to rebuke lack. Lack is not part of our, our spiritual makeup. Prosperity is. So we're going to do some teaching uh, on that and believe God for, for financial prosperity. Amen. Okay, with that, I just want to close. Lord, we thank you for this time. Father, we claim Psalm 91. No plague is going to come nigh our dwelling. We claim uh, Isaiah 54, 17. No weapon formed against us shall prosper. This plague was formed, and it's not going to prosper. Medical problems were formed. They're not going to prosper. A debt was formed, and it's not going to prosper. Relationship issues were formed, and it's not going to prosper in Jesus' name. Job problems were formed, and it's not going to prosper in Jesus' name. These things are not going to prosper. The word of God is true. And we are called to prosperity, and we claim prosperity right now in Jesus' name. For the Lord says, I am the Lord that healeth thee, and I will provide all your need according to my riches that are in glory. Amen. And God owns everything. Amen. He's sovereign over all. And Lord, we give you all the praise and the honor and the glory. And we seal the word. We bless the people right now. And will Lord multiply the giving back to them, whatever they've given. Lord, multiply it back to them right now in Jesus' name. Amen. Pastor Andrea, we thank you for being out there tonight. Amen. And being a good uh, teammate with the, with, the, with the chat. And Pastor Sean and, and uh, little future Apostle jo Josiah. We bless you all. We bless you tonight. Amen. Good night, all.